Hey, what's up guys? Still Rain, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a LiPo review and shootout of these two batteries. We'll go ahead and get started. The first battery here is going to be the Sechi AC uh, Formula 95C. It's a 4S battery. Uh, I've been trying to get a hold of this one for a while now. I just recently picked it up from Flight Club. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to uh, MV Astro and Sed Hendo for doing a video on this. Um, been trying to get a hold of these batteries for a while. They're pretty hard to get a hold of, but they seem, you know, every, everybody that's tested them, they seem to be pretty awesome batteries. So I'll let you guys see what it comes with and, and some of the features. So this is basically how it comes in the box. Um, nice little strap that comes around it. I'll show you some other features here. I'll go ahead and uh, unstrap the, the strap here and toss that to the side. Also comes with a main discharge uh, protector there which you know I haven't seen one battery I've tested yet come with any of that so that's pretty awesome and the main key feature of this battery if you could see there is a real short balance plug lead so what's and, and a lot of people would think you know oh that's gonna be horrible to connect to you know a charger or anything like that but what it does come with is this extension that's disconnectable I've only seen one other battery uh, incorporate this into their into their line and it's the GMB uh, Jeoning batteries and they don't have it set up like this they have a printed circuit board underneath here and if you crash hard enough it could crack that board and then your batteries pretty much wasted where I think this is a lot better idea is all you basically do is plug it in there and then straight in your parallel board or charger so pretty awesome it's the first battery I've tested that has uh, you know this sort of balance lead so that's gonna be awesome you know once your battery's charged you just go ahead and unplug it keeps it out of the way don't have to worry about it getting in your props or anything else like that so uh, this was a $36 battery um, it's definitely not on the cheap end it's on the premium end but hopefully it performs like it's supposed to alright so we're gonna go ahead and get a, a way to this bad boy and then test it for the, uh, the internal resistance. I haven't touched this battery, haven't charged it. It's sitting as it is uh, from the factory, so we'll go ahead and get a weight here. Let it zero out. It's coming in at 196 grams. 196 grams, so it's definitely not a light battery. That's for sure. And we'll go ahead and toss that to the side. Take this battery discharge lead off and go ahead and test the internal resistance. And it's sitting, I always test my internal resistance at 72 degrees, between 70 and 72 degrees. So we'll go ahead and test it, the whole pack. And it's sitting at 22.8 uh, milliohms of resistance, which isn't too bad with the plug and everything. So it's, it's about around 4 milliohms per cell. And I always test them at uh, storage charge as well, which it's sitting at. It's sitting at, uh, uh, this battery sitting at 3.86 volts per cell right now. We'll also test one of the individual cells here. So about 4.7. So go ahead and toss this battery to the side and move on to the next. Now the next is from PyroFlip RC. This is the PyroDrone uh, 1600 milliamp 95C. This is their new uh, silicon graphene uh, team edition battery, um, affectionately called and referred to as the Who Cares battery. Re uh, I've heard nothing but good things about these. This is my first uh, venture into these batteries. But uh, Surge over there at PyroFlip sells some pretty good stuff. So uh, I'm expecting a lot of good things out of this battery. Um, so anyways, as you can see, and this battery comes in, uh, it's $28. So it's it's a, about 8 bucks cheaper uh, than, than the uh, Asechi 95C. So we'll go ahead and weigh this bad boy right here, see where it comes in at. Zero this out. Hundred eighty-nine grams, so 
it's about about six seven grams lighter than the other battery and of course the Sechi was 1500 milliamp this is a 1600 milliamp so it, it has a, another 100 milliamps to it put that off to the side we'll go ahead and test this internal resistance it's also sitting at um, a storage charge and uh, around 72 degrees Twenty-four point three, so it's it's sitting about the same as the other battery. It's not too bad. Test one of the individual cells here. It's sitting about five, so it might be a little bit higher. But uh, you know, some of these batteries, once they uh, first get charged in a couple cycles the internal resistance tends to go down quite a bit so maybe by you know twenty percent sometimes so it might go down to three or four after a couple cycles but all my battery testing um, basically I get these batteries brand new I charge them up to uh, four point two volts per cell sixteen point eight volts total and uh, just go ahead and throw them right on the the 80 amp uh, continuous current discharge rig that I have so we'll go ahead and um, We'll go, we'll go ahead and get started on that testing and, and see which battery comes out on top here. Here's the 80 amp discharge rig I'm going to be using for this test, guys. Keep in mind that the bulbs are 12 volt, 100 watts, and each bulb pulls approximately 10 amps for a total of 80 amps, 8 bulbs. And uh, it's, a, it's a dynamic load, so once the load is applied, uh, the, the amperage will drop down to the mid to low 70s. Okay, here we go guys, and if you want to see my testing methodology, please check the video description uh, down below. I'll give you a quick synopsis on it though. I charge both uh, batteries to 16.8 volts, and I'll hit them with the 80 amp uh, dis uh, discharge current until it gets down to 14 volts or 3.5 volts per cell. At that time, I'll turn off the current, allow the battery to rebound a bit, um, and once the battery you know after so many cycles the battery doesn't rebound past 14.8 volts or 3.7 volts per cell we'll call the the test quits there so and basically the battery that has less bursts with longer times is going to be the clear winner so here we go we'll go ahead and get started Once it hits 14 volts, I'll go ahead and turn off the load here. And this is the Pyrodrone pack, silicon graphene. There goes the first burst. Once it stops rebounding, we'll uh, hit it again with the second. And that seems to be it. We'll go ahead and hit it with the second burst. Still rebounding a bit. Seems like that's going to be it. All the way down. Had a pretty decent long first burst. As you can see as the battery's draining, it's uh it's getting less and less time.
Not rebounding anymore. I'll hit it again. 13. Might have one or two small bursts left in it. Hit again. All the way down. All right, going to call this one quits, guys. Um, basically, that last burst was probably a second or less. So that's about all this battery is going to give down to 3.7 volts. And we'll go ahead and get started with the Asechi battery and see how it does. Before we move to the Asechi battery, we're going to get a final temperature reading here. Get all sides of the battery. And as you can see, the max was 138. So we'll go ahead and move on to the Asechi. Alright, here we go with the Asechi battery. And this will be its first burst, down to 14 volts. Here we go. They'll hover in about 14.15 volts. Starting to drop now. 14.02. Hovering right at 14.02. It's got a really long first burst to it. There we go. Finally got into the high 13s. Let it rebound here. Doesn't seem like it's rebounding past 15.30 volts, so I'll go ahead and hit it with the second burst. There we go. Doesn't seem to be rebounding much more than where it's at. We'll go ahead and hit it with the third burst. 15.15. There we go. There we go. Sorry if you guys can't see the readouts too well. The, the halogen 12-volt, uh, 100-watt lights are pretty bright, so... Kind of blinds everything in the area. And we'll go ahead and hit it again. It's not rebounding anymore. This one's getting pretty close. It might have one or two bursts left in it. Maybe one, I'm thinking. No more rebound. Hit it again. Yep, already down to below 14. So I think this one's going to be called quits, guys. That last burst. Yeah, let's see here if it rebounds any. Yeah, I don't think it's going to rebound much more than that. It's instantly going to go under 14 volts as soon as I turn it on. So we're going to go ahead and call this one quits, guys, and um, go ahead and get a final temperature read here. All 
And I have to say that's pretty strenuous load considering, but its max temperature was 146, as you could see. Try that again. That's max temperature 146.8. A little bit hotter than the other battery, but it also did uh, perform a little bit better uh, on that first burst, which is what you want to see. It, show, it shows a lot about the voltage uh, sag and its resistance to it. So we'll go ahead and discuss the results here in a minute. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and discuss the results here. We're going to start off with the Pyrodrome pack. It had seven bursts. Its longest burst was for 32 seconds, which is pretty respectable. And its final temperature was 138 degrees. Uh, for the Asechi pack, it had five bursts. And its longest burst, of course, was which was its first, was 51 seconds. And it had a final temperature of 146 degrees. Now, what you could gain from this is that both these packs performed pretty well, considering... Um, the Asechi pack, AC pack, whatever you want to call it, uh, bar barely eked out the, the Pyrodrome pack in terms of performance. It did come out a little bit hotter uh, by 8 degrees in the end, but then again, that's the byproduct of its longer first run. So, then again, um, you know, you have to look at both of these batteries in the respect of one's premium and one's more in the budget realm. So if one really did perform better, it probably should have considering it's, it's $36 as opposed to $28. So I'll, I'll go ahead and let you guys make up your minds and decisions on that one. There's still a long-term test to come. Um, there's more testing to be done on actual flying rigs. But this is just the 80 amp continuous current test and pretty close com competitors overall. Uh, only difference is uh, $8 uh, price tag. So you guys go ahead and make the decision on which one you think is the winner. Go ahead and then check down below the link for my testing methodology and spreadsheet results. It'll also show some of the other batteries I've tested over the past year or so. And um, that's pretty much going to be it for, for this video, guys. Uh, please like, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Uh, share it and leave any comments, uh, suggestions, or anything else in the comment section below. Thanks, guys. I'll see you.